questions, that's how we got where we are today. So you probably want to go back to the agenda. Yeah, so um, I, we're still we're getting lots of lots of messages in the in the chat thing about um, using somebody else's link. That's okay. The link That's that fine. you all came in on, it's all the same link. So if you know somebody who didn't get the link and you want to forward it, that's fine. We're not really sure why it went to to one chunk of parents and not another chunk because it all went out through the same thing. You know, the the internet's been a little bit iffy. The power has been a little bit iffy in the neighborhood with the windstorm. So. I don't know, but feel free to go ahead and um, and do that. And um, if put it on your Facebook if you want. <laughs> yeah, and if people are having a hard time getting in with that same link, just encourage them to keep trying. Um, sometimes that's a on the on the user on the user end. We know it's working because you're you're all here. And like I said, we're going to switch to YouTube, so we don't have these barriers next time. Okay, did you want to go over the agenda? You wanted that? that so lesson. when we're thinking about what, what is it that you want to know, um, we imagine that probably the schedule is first and foremost on your mind. Not only does it, what does it look like for your student, but what does it look like for you as a parent who's probably working for home, from home and trying to support your student? Um, and a schedule is really important, especially for middle school kids. And then teaching, teaching and learning, like what are the expectations for teachers? What are the expectations for students? What are the things that you need to and should hold your student accountable for? And then, and so we'll pause after those for questions. And then of course, at the end there, we understand there may be questions um, that you have that we didn't address. Um, so, okay. And we did our lens. Okay. Oh, I thought we were going to do schedule first. We forgot to flip our slides. <laughs> Megan, you're muted. <laughs> Keep telling Shannon she's going to she's going to miss that feature when we're when we're back in person again. Um, do you want do you want me to go over the schedule first? Yeah, let's do the schedule first. Okay. All right. Um, so we understand that there was a video that the district posted today that went out to all of the families that was um, not 100% accurate with what was happening at all of the middle schools in Beaverton. So, um, so the first question that I want to address is that school is going to start at 915 for students at Cedar Park. Um, we have some some time built into the day in the middle of the day or end of the day at different different times of day for students that other schools don't they did that all on the front end in the morning um, and some did the same thing that we did so the school day does go from 9 15 to 3 50 and i'm going to um, go through and show you guys what their schedule will look like that's the really confusing teacher version. That's not going to be very helpful for you. So let me see if I can get to the right tab here. Let me get to the bottom of the screen. Go to student schedules. This one's a little bit easier to read, hopefully. Um, okay, so I'll make it a little bit bigger for you. So this this schedule um, was in the Cedar Reader that, she, that Dr. Anderson sent home last week. It is identical with one exception, and that would be that the orange blocks of time are split into two periods on this version, but other than that, everything else is identical. And um, we will send this out in the next Cedar Reader. So if you're interested in having a copy of this, please make sure that you check Dr. Anderson's next Cedar Reader. And um, Shannon, when are you sending that out? Next week? Uh, well, I sent one yesterday. My plan is to send one on Monday, but I might need to do one on Friday or Saturday just to help parents feel prepared for Monday. That would be great. So we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that, this, that the schedule gets in the next Cedar Reader too. So, so the kids, 
we really wanted to try to to simplify things as much as possible, knowing that there's not really anything very simple about the situation that we're in. Um, but the student, this is going to be the kids' schedule on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the students, just like when when they're in in person at school, they will have two electives every day. They'll have an advisory. They'll have a lunch, um, and then they'll have some time built in here where. Um, where they are doing applied learning, independent reading, um, engaging in wellness activities. That's also for nutrition. So that's like, can be a, a break time. If there are things that, that you want them to do, maybe some physical chores or something to get them up and moving, um, that's great. So that, that orange, the orange block of time on this schedule, like we have it on here. We have something that the kids are assigned to be doing because we know that that helps you as parents when the school says, this is what you're supposed to be doing during this time. But as parents, we want you to know that there's, there's a little bit of flexibility in there. We're not necessarily gonna explain that to your children, but we want you to know as parents that there's um, some breathing room and, and some, some flexibility built in there. So, um, so the, the kids will have um, two electives, an advisory, a lunch, these, these two blocks built in that, that is for that, that wellness, um, but there will also be some support classes that are offered during that time. So if you have a student who receives special education services, English as a second language services, or AVID, some days they will be logged, logged on and getting help from and working with, with the teachers for those classes. And then they'll have three core classes, the humanities, math, and science like they always do. So um, it's a little bit different for each grade level, um, but just a, a couple of things that are built into this. The, um, the advisory classes are um, comprised of students that are across the grade level, not necessarily on the same team. They're gonna be spending a lot of time in class with the same group of kids, and we wanted to try to give them uh, some experience and opportunity to, to get to know and to build some relationships with kids that are not the same kids that they're going to see every day in their other classes because they will be traveling together in a cohort. So, um, so the advisory is a place where that will happen and the advisory is really all about connection. So they'll be doing some um, web activities, which is welcome everybody. If you've been at Cedar Park, that's something that will be familiar to you. They will have some social emotional learning, some lessons that happen during that time. They'll have some one day where it is with other kids on their team and the teachers will mix it up um, and and that'll kind of vary by day of week. So if your child is a sixth grader, their lunch is going to be from 1120 to 1150. So they'll have their elective classes, they'll have their advisory, then they'll go to lunch. Right after lunch, there's this this 1150 to 1235 time that's built in. And um, if, if your child needs to, needs to access nutrition services at one of the schools, we know that that's pretty difficult to do in a half hour period of time. So this is a time where they can go do that. So if they're spending this time um, eating lunch, doing a wellness activity, uh, you know, going up to the nearest school to get lunch, that, that is totally fine. That is totally flexible. If they're eating lunch at home and, um, you know, you want some clarity about, okay, they can eat their lunch in a half hour, no big deal. Then that can be time where they're doing some independent reading, or it could be an activity of their choice, um, or something like that. So that's for sixth grade. For seventh grade, if the students need more time to go access nutrition services to get a lunch at school, uh, we have what's called synchronous and asynchronous time built into every class. So the beginning of their classes will be synchronous every day. They're expected to, to log on to Zoom to check in with their teacher and they will either have a lesson delivered to them in person in real time by that teacher or the teacher will um, provide some direction. So they might say, get out this article and start reading it. We're gonna discuss this in a few minutes or something like that. So, um, but for that period three elective class for seventh graders, that is always going to have asynchronous time where it's not no longer the the instructional part of it it's the the application part of it so that if students do need to to log off and go get lunch at a school that they have that option and then for eighth grade um they have that same independent reading time that's that's before their lunch so they can leave early they basically can go from 11 55 to 12 10 and and combine those together to go get a lunch if they need a lunch um 
so your students are expected to engage in, in every class every day. Some of that time will be logged into Zoom and, and be real time, and some of it will be application. It'll be um, asynchronous. So your teachers, their teacher will stay logged on. They can turn off their camera, they can mute their microphone, they can be working at their desk, and then if they have a question, raise their hand or turn their mic back on and ask a question. Some days the teacher will have them working in small groups in a breakout room and the teacher can pop in and out of rooms um, to, to check on each group. So, um, so sometimes that's something that will happen. Um, and then PE, so with, with two PE teachers, that's in, and 900 kids, they work with about over, they work with about close to 450 kids. And so for PE to keep class sizes reasonable um, and distance learning, they will only be logged on for a synchronous session with their PE teachers two days a week. And their teachers will explain which two days a week on the first day of school to them. Um, and then the other two days a week, there will be a lesson posted that they should be doing and still engaged in PE, but it won't be a, a, a live login, see your PE teacher for instruction. It'll be something that the PE teachers post on their Canvas page. So that's the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday schedule. Um, Megan, could you could you just expand a little bit on just a little bit on the intent of advisory? So, yeah, well, I can, but go ahead. So advisory, you know, ad advisory is really is really intended to be um, to be a place where students can have some social time and build relationships and also receive social emotional learning uh, lessons. And so there will be lessons that are delivered it's gonna feel a little bit different than, than lessons that they have in their other classes because it's going to be focused on social and emotional health and, um, and on relationships with other students and with the teacher. You wanna add anything, Shannon? Uh, no, well, other than part of that is also, not only is that important to us as educators and we know that we need to do it and it's a value, but it, was, it is also outlined by ODE that every school has to make time and have dedicated um, social emotional work with kids. Um, not only was it a practice before, but it's a gonna it's gonna be more intentional um, because of the situation that we're in, and that our students are 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 disconnected in a way that um, you know they haven't been before. So we need to make sure that we're really taking care of those things. So. Their Wednesday schedule. So the schedule that's on the left, this is the teacher schedule. You know, you're welcome to peruse through that if you want to, but, um, but the student schedule on the right is probably the more interesting part for you. Um, but the students, we wanted to try to keep a routine for them. So they, they will get up in the morning, they'll still go to school, they will go in um, and, and meet with their advisory teacher. And we're gonna call that Web Wednesday. So that's gonna be a lot of fun activities that sixth graders do with eighth grade web leaders on Wednesday, but there will also be some engaging um, web activities for, for the students that are not a part of that. And then the, the schedule on Wednesday is the same for all three grade levels in the school uh, because it's all asynchronous. So the teacher's lessons will be posted on their Canvas page on, on Wednesdays. Um, so their synchronous time, their, their login time, their real teacher time, in-person time is going to be um, their advisory class first thing in the morning. And then they will have a block of time. They're expected to go into their Core 1 Canvas page and do that class. And then the second one, there's a lesson that will be posted. So they'll log in and they'll do their Core 2 class. Then they'll have an hour for lunch from 11 to 12. And then they'll do their Core 3 class. And again, Core is Humanity, Science, and Math. So when they're done with that, there will be um, from 1240 to 210, independent work and reading. So that's where they can be doing homework, they can be reading, they can be doing wellness activities. Um, you know, if they need another nutrition break, they can do that. Um, and then if they have any questions about any of the assignments from their core classes, they can, uh, or, or their elective classes, they can log in for office hours. So the office hours is really intended to be if students have questions. There was some confusion about that last spring. Um, I think some folks thought that, you know, kids were supposed to log in and, and go to office hours, but the intention is not, um, it's not a required thing. It is truly just if students have a question or if they need help, 
they would log into the office hours. So there's a 45 minute chunk of office hour time in there for the core teachers and a 45 minute chunk for the elective teachers. And then um, after that, they would, they would go to the, the elective teachers Canvas page and uh, participate on Canvas on their, um, in their elective classes. So I think that covers most of that. Oh, so, um, so one other thing that I will share with you is that the teachers are going to, um, are going to give the kids a, a, a template to fill out. And Shannon, did these end up going out today? Yes, yeah, so um, they will go out for seventh grade and sixth grade. And on one page, on one side of the page is this version. And then the teachers also came up with a simpler version that has less information that's more student friendly, but we wanted to communicate as much information to parents. So they'll be getting those um, at their Wolf Day. And we're hoping that you will fill them in and have them posted in your students learning environment, not only for them to follow a schedule, but for you to reference so you that you know what class or what um, subject they should be working on at what time. Now it it can be a little bit confusing to figure out which which classes the kids go to because the periods are not always in in, in order and that's a long complicated explanation so I won't won't go into detail on that. So do not don't don't fill this out with your kids ahead of time. Um, let the let the teachers do the lifting on that part. They will meet with the kids. Your kids will get an email. It'll tell them where to zoom into on the first day, and the the teacher that they meet with will help them um, will help help them fill in the template so that they know which links to which classes to go to, where to find the links, and and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the first day of school, the sixth graders are going to start out with a core teacher um, so that, and, and their first period elective teacher will join them so that, uh, so that they can make sure that they know how to get onto Canvas and, and we have a, a backup plan for having the links if, if they need some extra help with that. Um, Shannon, are you? Real quick question, sorry. On Wednesday's schedule, does core one, two, three correlate to a specific period? It seems a little unclear. I don't know if you want to go back to yeah. that real quick. You know, it, it is. So, um, so I, it doesn't say that on here because the um, a core one class for a sixth grader is their period three and a core one class for a seventh and eighth grader is a period one. So it does not line up. So it says core one, core two, core three because those periods aren't the same for every, for every grade level. So, um, they're doing it out, they're doing it on YouTube. Oh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's Got it. muted. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> uh, so, so, um, so when you, when you look, when you look at the, at the student schedule, you know, you, you can cross reference this, you, you, you can see, you know, kind of how this works, but basically the seventh graders have two core classes and then electives and then their core three. So it's just, Whichever core class happens first in the day is their core one. Their middle one that happens is their core two. And then the last core class that they have of the day, regardless of the time of day, is their core three class. And we know that it's kind of confusing. And that's part of the reason why we're like, let the teachers fill this in with the kids because they'll, they'll walk them through it and, and make sure that they, that they understand when it says core one, what does that mean? It will be math, science, or humanities, and it'll be in the same order that they have it every other day. If it's math, science, humanities, humanities, science, math, or whatever, the order, um, the order is the same from day to day, but the time of day changes. Um, and then the last thing that that we know is going to come up um, is is you know there there will be some requests to change schedules because of the electives, and um, you know I I have to be really honest with you guys about this. I. I went through the elective request for um, nine, all 900 kids in our school one by one. I looked at every single one of your children's requests. I looked at, um, we didn't have Spanish or STEM, so, so if they signed up for one of those classes, I took those out of the mix and looked at their third choice or their second choice and considered that as their first choice and then put them into the cohort that, that, most, closely, that most closely matched that, but balancing that for 
for gender and balancing that for the students' wishes across 900 students. This was no easy task. Um, I hated making these decisions because I wanted to give everybody their first and second choice, and we can't. We, we could not do that. So um, part of it is that we have to build a schedule that when we go back in person, the students can go from, from the, the CDL, you know, the, the distance learning model to a hybrid model. And to do that, we have to keep the cohorts at a certain size and we have to have students traveling together all, all day. That, that is, you know, ODE and, and the Oregon Health Authority have both said, you wanna keep the contact between students, those cohorts, those groups, as small as possible to reduce the risk of, um, of spreading the virus during this pandemic. And so because the students need to stay together all day in those cohorts, those cohorts are, are scheduled by, by electives. Um, this was a, an incredibly complex, difficult puzzle to solve. And, and um, I was able to give everybody a first or second choice. Their semester classes or, or, uh, or their elective classes are semester long, except for PE, for most of the kids. Um, and so first or second semester, they should have a first or second choice on there. Um, but their other elective class may not be their second choice. Um, it might be their third or their fourth and, and there just was no way around that. So in order to make a schedule change, I, I have to change every single teacher for your student and change all of their electives. And then I have to take somebody else from another cohort because they're already full and they might not want to schedule change and then change all of their classes too to create space. So, um, so we will not be able to make schedule changes for, for your students. Um, and I, I wish it was not, that was not the way it is, but um, you know, but we've got to look at everything as Shannon was saying earlier through a lens of safety. First and foremost, we want to keep your, we want to keep your kids safe. We want to keep our staff safe and we want to do our part in, um, in, in curbing the pandemic and, and limiting contact between groups of students is, um, is the way that we can do that. Yeah, and I, so just wanna say, <laughs> I've never seen um, a master schedule or system principal hand schedule pretty much every student in the school. Um, and I also want to just say Megan is a rock star of all 53 schools in the district. She was able to get ours completed um, first and and that's because we started working on this probably 12 weeks ago. Um, so uh, and that doesn't everybody's in a similar position where once they've created a cohort there's it's like a house of cards. The minute you move something there are dozens of after effects to that. Um, and and that's the that's one of the limitations of of this year. Uh, and I know that it can be very frustrating, especially since last year we were able to brag that our kids um, were the only kids in the in the middle schools that got their first and second choices and also then had a third elective. And we just weren't able to make that happen in this situation. So Last year, though we did, though we only went toward till March, um, they got all kinds of fun stuff that they wanted, and and this year is not not like that. So I'm sorry. So I would just say, you know, and I, I know it's hard, and and it can be hard as a parent when you know you want to you want to see your, your kids' dreams, your their passions fulfilled. Um, so please, as the as the as the parent. Um, try to set that aside and, and to encourage your kids that you know there's an opportunity to, to try something new that maybe they've never tried they might love it and they don't know it think about a growth mindset and encourage them to just to just give it a shot it's only going to be a semester it's not going to be a year long a year long course this year and that's part of the reason why we made that decision um, so that so that we could give kids a little bit more option and, and if they were in something that they didn't love it wasn't going to be for the whole year so um, so please, please encourage them to, to, to think about an, an opportunity for learning something new and for, for growth and new experience. All right, Shannon, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm answering some, <laughs> some uh, questions. Um, okay. So... If you attended the last parent meeting, um, this is kind of what we outlined, but obviously we're in a different place now. Um, 
I can't stress enough how important it is that we create a learning space for our students. Um, and one that is, I mean, if you're working from home, you know how this like work life balance is like meshing and it's like, well, do I work from home or do I live at work? So creating a space where students have some, um, you know, ability to concentrate, but also to, to be able to walk away. And, and right now when our teachers are asking us about homework, we're saying, you know what, um, homework needs to not, if, the, if there is any homework, which right now I, that is not a priority, but if there is any homework, because we have that applied learning time during the day, it needs to not involve a screen. Um, we've got to get them to walk away and be off the screen. And so um, that learning space and to, to go to and then walk away from is really important. Um, we've worked really hard at developing schedules that you as parents can, can hopefully feel positive about enforcing and that kids can follow um, throughout the day, especially even on Wednesday when they're not having all of these synchronous sessions, they still have a schedule and it really matches what they're doing the other four days a week. So um, honor and honor those routines. Middle school kids <laughs> need routines. I, I think you know that the minute you have a variation in their routine, like, okay, you don't have to get up at a certain time, they're sleeping till noon. So um, we've, we've got to honor our routines and really um, get, and so maybe they, they still get to blow those routines on the weekends. I don't know, that's up to you as a parent, but um, trying to look, make school look and feel as much like it has in the past, which is routines five days a week and maybe some wiggle room on the weekend. Um, school supplies, keep it simple. We did work with the teachers to come up with a list um, that is in the Cedar Reader. It is also on our school website. If you or if your family needs a scholarship for those, we have resources. If you know of a family that might need resources, please let us know. Please email or call and we will make sure that we can get those things to um, the families and kids that need it. Um, can, I, can I jump in for a second to answer a question, Shannon? Absolutely. Yeah, um, because we uh, we forget to talk about this one sometimes, and I'm I'm going to um, I'm going to share a different a different screen here. Sometimes the screen I'm looking for seems to just disappear. Uh, let's see here. Well, if you want to keep talking for a second, I'll, I'll try to find this. I think I was going to talk about engagement. And I mean, the fact yeah. that you're here tonight, despite all of our stupid technical failings and whatever, um, I really appreciate it. Um, teachers are reaching out to kids this week. There is a um, parent or family toolkit that's been posted on the district website. And I think it's linked on our website. And I believe I linked it in the Cedar Reader. I'll go back and check. Um, but there are, so there are videos on there for you to watch um, how to, how, how to like log into Canvas and how to engage in with parent view and those kinds of things. If you're having needs that the district hasn't developed tutorials for, I would really love to hear that. Um, I don't know that they necessarily that we necessarily engaged parents in coming up with those topics just because of the time crunch. So um, let us know if you're needing something that's not there. It may be in a different location and I can help guide you to it or or your family friends. OK, um, other other parents. Megan, go ahead. So um Thank you, Sky. Just forwarded the Cedar Reader to a link in the in the chat. So if you if you missed it, thank you, um, thank you for doing that. So so some of you are asking about is a cohort the same thing as a team? So I'm I'm, I'm sharing this with you as a as a visual. So um, a cohort is a, is a group of is a group is a group. Can you zoom? Students. Can you zoom in a little bit, Megan? Maybe Command uh, Plus. I don't know. Yeah. So a a cohort is a group of. 34 students who will be traveling together during distance learning. When we go to hybrid, 
half of that cohort will come on a Monday, Tuesday. The other half of that cohort will come on Thursday, Friday. We do not know the timeline for the district having that finalized and sending that information out yet to families. But as an example, the kids that are in cohort A1, they have uh, that, that group of students has Lori Barbas as, as, um, as their core one teacher. That whole group will go to art and then first period and, and then PE second period. Then they'll have choir second semester period one, PE second semester, and so on. They follow the same schedule. So that is that line right there, that first line, that's a cohort. When we talk about a team, all of these teachers that are in green together compromise a team. And that would be, in this case, Team UConn. These are our sixth grade teams. So those three teachers work together. They share all of the same students for their core class. And they do, uh, they do a lot of collaborating, especially on the, the social emotional learning and, and how to um, help kids feel connected as a team. So a cohort is, up, is about 34 students. And then the team is, is those three teachers working together um, with about 105 students. And again, they share, they share that groups of kids. So, um, so when you hear cohort, that's the, that's the small group. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. All right, that was okay. it. Um, I feel so bad about the link, like gosh. The whole point of this was to be helpful to parents and then they don't get the link and it's not helpful. Okay, um, so I would say if there's if there's anything that you commit to as far as your own uh, per, per, parental development in supporting your student, it's uh, learning Canvas and there are um, there are videos to help you do that. As secondary students, they will be using Canvas until they graduate. And I will say this, many, many, many universities use Canvas. So it is an investment worth your time to learn Canvas. Um, communication, one of the things that we've noticed about our students, and I mean, I think you probably also know as a parent is that um, communication is challenging for middle school kids. Um, and so as adults, like we're comfortable with email, like that's something that our generation deals with on a daily hourly basis. But our, our, our when these kids are, are adults, there's a good chance that um, they may not have email because it's just not something that is um, part of their culture. So we need to help our students in learning how to communicate with their teachers. They're not gonna be in a classroom um, for 84 minutes where they can just raise their hand. So when they have questions or they need help, we have to support them in, in feeling confident and safe reaching out to teachers. Um, also communicating with counselors for their needs and you as a parent in communicating with counselors. And then also with us, the administration, um, about what you're seeing and what's working and what's not working. And um, we will be observers in all of the teachers Canvas courses. We will be attending Zoom sessions. Um, we miss seeing kids, <laughs> um, but that's also our way to just kind of gauge what's going on and what does instruction look like in this environment. And so, so we wanna hear from you um, how things are going. And I, I expect that we'll continue to be We'll, we'll do some more focus groups, um, probably within a month or six weeks max to kind of get a gauge for what's working and what's not. That was really helpful to us in the spring. Um, and then finally, I hear from so many of you that you are building a community, that you are um, trying to find neighbors um, to help support each other academically with supervision and with socialization. Um, and we've continued to stress over the last week, week and a half, that we need consistency. So that if your if your neighbor's student is in a different cohort or ha on a different team, there needs to be enough consistency that those students can work together um, and support each other. They don't necessarily have to be in the same class or with the same teacher. Um, We've traditionally done a pretty good job with this because it's part of our MYP expectations, but it's even more important this year that you're seeing that consistency. So, so we want to know 
um, um, if, if there's a struggle there, okay? All right, Megan, next one. Okay, <laughs> so um, we can use the um, raise hand feature. You can, it, so you're welcome to raise your hand and we can call on people. Um, we can also use uh, the chat. So David Platt, go ahead. Ooh, I got in first, yay me. Um, I just had a question about some other information that came home about Wolf Day mentioning science boxes and art boxes. What are those and does everybody need them? Great question. Um, so we, we are putting together science kits that will span approximately the first semester. Some of the materials may work into second semester so that kids can do labs at home. Um, and I also just want to add, this is from a very generous support by our PTC. So if and when we do uh, <laughs> um, our fundraiser, since we're not doing a 5K, at least in, this, in the fall, um, th that's where so much of their funds are going. Art boxes, um, unfortunately, the material, so many schools around the country are doing this so it's taking a while to get our materials in we had hoped that our art boxes would be ready but they're not going to be ready okay really important update right here we were going to roll out our new chromebooks as you know from it they gave us the stop on that the new chromebooks will be rolled out september 30th october 1st and october 2nd we will also have school pictures those days. As far as schedule and timing goes, I will be sending you that information. But that will be when students get to come to school, exchange their old Chromebook for a new one, take their school pictures, and with all preparation, pick up art boxes or anything else they don't have. So September 30th, October 1st, October 2nd, and I will start including that in, our, in the Cedar Reader. Unless the Chromebook is having issues right now, then you can um, make an appointment and have that taken care of now because those Chromebooks are old. So a couple other questions coming up in the chat room. If a student is absent for the day, do we still call in? Yes, um, because thank you. Great question. We didn't get to attendance. So in a nutshell, Attendance will be taken every day by students logging into their Canvas course. Canvas takes a record of that when a student engages. If your student does not log into each Canvas course every day, you will get a phone call home after 5 p.m. saying, hey, your student was marked absent for these classes, like you normally would. And I believe it goes, it used to go home at like 10. So then, because we understand that the day is different, students have an opportunity then to engage with their courses between five and midnight, and they can still then be counted present. So if you know that your student is not going to be attending that day, please, please, please call the attendance line or email Jennifer Dishian, our attendance person, so that she can go ahead and mark them absent for that day. A bit of good news in case you're not following the chat room is we had two counselors last year and this year we have three counselors. Um, Rachel, Rachel Talif is no longer with us, but we saw George McMurtry and then we have two counselors who are not new counselors, but new to our school. So I posted, um, I posted their names in the chat, but we have Callie McAuliffe at sixth grade, George McMurtry at seventh grade and Rebecca Pearson at eighth grade. Um, and there's another question on here about synchronous learning presentations. Will they be recorded in case of questions or later to review? Yes, we know that there are situations where kids might end up missing a class for a variety of family situations. And so, um, yes, the, the teachers will post by the end of the day uh, the lesson, the lesson that, the kids, that the kids might have missed. Um, how is band going to work remotely? Zoom is not great for overlapping sound agree with you um, part of being a musician is being able to is being able to listen and, and hear the people that you're playing with and developing a, a listening skill in addition to a playing skill so um, I know that Jen Stan Jim our band teacher has some ideas for how to do that and that our um, our, our district Tosa um, Blake Allen is working with the teachers on that too 
Um, uh, there was something about, okay, library books. Real quick, I want to touch on the book thing. So yes, uh, bring your library books to the Wolf Day. Um, the district is developing library buses and then our um, LMA, our library, she's amazing, but she's also going to be developing a system where um, kids can request books. What I'm anticipating as I'm seeing things develop is that we may have a um, probably two or three days a month, if, if this continues, which probably will, um, we may have a, a day or three every month where students specifically come to school to drop off things and pick them up. Um, I can see that this kind of wolf day experience is going to become something that we have to do on a regular basis. And having information, kind of Q&A sessions um, for parents too. We know that you guys are doing a heavy lift with this this year and it is not easy to to be a parent during a pandemic and if you are working a working parent it's it's a lot it's really really hard and we want to try to make things as easy for you as possible and to communicate um as as best we can uh knowing that some of this is just it's confusing and and we've all developed a, a new vocabulary um throughout all this too so um so we'll we'll continue to host some q a sessions too and you're welcome to email us or to email the, the counselors or the teachers with questions as well. Um, so somebody's asking about using a, a MacBook rather than the Chromebook. If you if you have a, another device that you want your child to use, you can totally do that. Um, Canvas will be loaded is loaded onto the Chromebook, so you can also access Canvas from the district webpage. So uh, if you want to use the, the MacBook rather than the Chromebook, that that is just fine. I I. I... I can't specifically speak to any other um, student like programs like Flipgrid or things like that. Um, that Scott, that might be a question that you email um, our our tech person and let me put her email in the chat for everyone. Oh, you mean in case some of the apps don't work as well? Yeah, I, I'm not <laughs> sure. So um, one of the yeah. things I, I, I think you should probably especially look for when you're taking your Canvas courses and learning about Canvas is notifications. You can adjust your notifications in Canvas so that you only receive it on certain events. If you don't adjust that notification, you're going to get an email for every time a teacher posts every time your kid turns something in, every time, and it's annoying. It's super overwhelming and annoying. So you've got to adjust your notifications to make sure that you're only seeing and hearing about things that really matter to you. There's a question about Canvas in here. So the, the courses are, the courses in Canvas are already talking, those two systems. Um, the teachers are in the process of putting their Canvas pages together. So you won't be able to see what's in their, what's in their classes until they publish that. Uh, one of the things that we heard over and over um, and totally agree with is that we need to have some consistency in terms of what the teacher's Canvas pages look like. So that's a lot of what the teachers are spending their time doing this week is learning more about Canvas and learning about, um, about, about how to set it up so that you and your students are having a more similar experience from class to class. Changing your ID and your password in parent view. That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. How you go about changing that. Do you Shannon? Um, no, <laughs> I don't know. But if you call the school, um, you call Leslie, our, our registrar, if you call the front office, they, they will get you to, um, they'll get you to the right person. And then I also put Kate Hitzman and Linda Peterson's email in the chat. Um, they're super helpful about tech stuff. Um, so that's, um, there's also the student help desk, which is SHD at beaverton.k12.org.us. Um, even though you're not a student, 
you can totally email that question. You can email the, that address and get an answer. Um, they're monitoring, there's, there's several people monitoring that help desk every day. There's a question about setting up an email dedicated to distance learning and school emails. I, I suppose if you, if, you, if you decide to set up your, your own email that you only wanna use for, for school related stuff, you would need to um, go in and change that in, in parent view. So whatever you have in our student information system is where we will send emails to. So have the email address in there that you, that you want us to send things to. I think that's a fantastic idea. I have a separate email that I use for like when I'm shopping or memberships or things like that um, so that I'm not having to like sift through all of that along with like my bank notifications and things like that. So I think that's a really smart idea. The electives, will they be for the full year? Great question. Megan? They, for the most part, they are a semester long this year. Um, so the students, you know, can, if they didn't get into their top choice, it's not going to be for a full year. Um, most of the students have PE for a full year. There are some students that will have PE for just a semester. Um, but other than that, the elective courses are, are all a semester long. And, and the reason for that inconsistency around PE was really just about having to keep the cohorts to a certain number so that if we go back to hybrid, we're not having to redo several hundred schedules. So we can only have 17 kids in a classroom if we go back to hybrid. So that's where you get a cohort of 34. And if we go hybrid, 17 go on Monday, Tuesday, and 17 go on Thursday, Friday. So and we had to start with the hybrid in it, like at the forefront. Am I, am I, I'm right, Megan, yeah? Yeah, yeah, and, and the PE classes in a hybrid model can be a little bigger because we have, our gyms are a lot bigger than our classroom space. So their, their PE classes will be a little bit bigger. So they actually, there's a question about will they have a chance, be given a chance to select their next elective and they, they won't, they actually have already been put into their, um, their courses for the entire year, even they don't have them until second semester. So that was part of what I had to look at was um, giving them, you know, looking at which two electives over the course of the year will, will students get. So they actually are already in that. And if you go into their student view and you pull up second semester, it'll, pop, it'll populate as first semester, but it should be in there if you look at second semester. And if not, their, their teacher will be able to give them that information. Um, as far as testing goes, um, where our teachers attended some professional development with the district office teaching and learning department. Um, and because so much uh, that's happening right now is just last minute, we're, we're, we're developing it like, you know, an hour before it gets presented. Um, we as administrators haven't been caught up on that. So we're planning department meetings with our teachers actually tomorrow so they can fill us in on what are the things that you've learned? Um, what, what is it that, you know, how is assessment gonna look in your classroom this year? Also, I will say the, um, so our back to school night is gonna be a back to school week. We will have several small sessions so um, obviously a grade level session or teacher sessions, um, I'm sorry, team sessions, things like that. So it's not like you're spending three hours on Zoom all on one night. Know that those will be recorded and will be posted so that if there's something you can't do on Tuesday night, you will still have access to it. Um, so uh, more information on that. We're gonna put a team of teachers together to develop some ideas uh, and then um, I have a group of parents that I work with awesome, who are awesome and wonderful and run ideas by them also to get feedback. So, and yes, if we go hybrid, there is an option for students to stay distance. It won't look exactly as it does now, but there is an option for parents to keep their students at home in distance learning. Other All right, we are. We are at 6.30. Do you want to do maybe one, maybe one or two more questions? Sure. Again, we got started a little late. There were some technology problems. I feel like in watching the district um, 
Q&A sessions that were handled on YouTube, there were much less technical issues. So I'm going to spend some time learning how to put that together. Um, yeah, there's a question that came up earlier. If you if we run this through, if we run these through the YouTube channel, is there a way for parents to ask questions? Yes, there is. They can be typing in and asking questions live. Um, and so just like we do here, one of us would be monitoring the questions while the other one is talking and and vice versa. So the back to school night dates for back to school night sessions would be appreciated sooner rather than later. So um, we don't know exactly which grade level is going to be on which night, but we are dedicating some time um, to, to do some planning for that next Wednesday with our teachers. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get out with we, we get a little more information out to you um, towards the end of next week. So it looks like in YouTube, you're not able to type private questions to the presenters. So that is one disadvantage. Um, I would say that the priority for me is to make this the most accessible as possible to parents. And given the email and Zoom glitch, um, that might that might be um, better. Uh, also, so um, as soon as we're done with this, um, I will go downstairs and save the recording and um, put it up on our school YouTube page. I will say that we have another session next week that we will also record. Um, you're welcome to attend that one too. You may have different questions once this once school's actually started. Um, so we uh, we really appreciate you showing up. We really appreciate your pa your patience with our our technology issues. I can speak to the fact that our last four five parent sessions didn't have this issue, so I don't know. <laughs> um, and yes, Hannah will be uh, recapping everything in the PTC blog. She's really good at that. Um, so, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, this is a fan. Heard from a staff member at a different school that district email server is bogged down by so many emails across schools. Everyone will eventually get the email to access tonight's <laughs> meeting. I'm so sorry. Okay, good. I'm it, wasn't, like, it wasn't you, Shannon. Aren't you glad? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not an idiot. I've done this. <laughs> okay, so we have, we have like two more quick questions in here. Let's go ahead and answer these. When uh, will students get contact lists for their cohorts? Um, we haven't even thought about that. I, I for their cohorts. So that would be a group hmm. of 34 students. Um, I don't. I don't know. That's a really good suggestion, though, because then they would know who all that was in their cohort. Let's look and to see if we can do that. Yeah, are um, we even allowed to do that? But their cohort is essentially cool. the kids that are in their in class. That, they're going to see, yeah. So, um, so that's cool. And then, do you know um, the student? You guys ask a lot of very technical questions that we're not usually the ones answering it. So, which is great. We're learning stuff too. Is student view login the same as their regular Chromebook login? I don't know if it's the same login or not. I would say try it. If it doesn't work, contact Leslie Redmond. She's our registrar, um, or Linda Peterson, or Caitlin Hitzman, and, and Shannon put those names in the um, in the email. They I know that they know how to pull up the the login information if their single sign on does not work. And I the parents out there probably knows the answer to that. Yeah. And that's where they, that's why they set up the student help desk, shd at beaverton.k12.odar.us. So, um, thank you all so much. We will see you again soon. Um, is there anything we can do to help? S stay tuned and continue giving us feedback so that we know what's working and what's not. So, um, thank you all so much. Um, we get better every day and uh, we really, we really appreciate you. We know that this is hard in some ways and that we're going to come out with some pluses on the other side. So have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.